Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the next video from the answer series on the Doppler effect. In this video we will encounter the Doppler equation and use it in calculations. In the previous video we saw how a sound can seem to be at a higher or lower frequency than it actually is. Christian Doppler worked out the relationship between the real and perceived frequencies and the speeds of the source, the observer and the sound. He put them together in what is now known as the Doppler equation. Here is the Doppler equation. It applies to all kinds of waves, including light, but since we are going to first apply it to sound, the observer is going to be referred to as the listener, who hears a certain frequency of sound. We know that if at least one of them are moving, then the frequency of the source is different. The ratio of the two frequencies is determined by the value of this fraction. And it comprises the three speeds involved. They are the speed of sound on that occasion. It can vary slightly in air due to variations in temperature that affect air density. The speed of the listener and the speed of the source of the sound. These last two are relative to the speed of the medium itself which is usually air. When the source and the listener are moving towards each other, the ratio frequency listener over frequency source is going to be greater than 1. If we add the velocity of the listener and or subtract the velocity of the source, then this fraction is also greater than 1. We get the opposite effect when the objects are moving away from each other. Now both of those ratios are going to be less than 1. Let's practice using this equation. In example 1, the velocity of the source is 20 meters per second and the frequency of the source is 500 hertz. The speed of sound is taken as 330 meters per second and you as the listener, your velocity is zero. We are going to calculate the frequency of sound as the source moves towards you and then away from you. Here is the solution. When moving towards, the velocity fraction must be greater than one. We achieve this value by adding the velocity of the listener at the top and subtracting the velocity of the source at the bottom. The velocity of the listener is zero. You must always show the substitution of the zero. When moving away, the velocity fraction must now be less than one. We get a value less than one when we subtract the velocity of the listener from the top and add the velocity of the source at the bottom. You can see the expected result in the answers. The frequency heard by the listener as the vehicle moves towards is higher than the frequency heard when it moves away. Here is the next question. We have a car traveling at 108 kilometers per hour with its hooter on. The driver must be in a hurry. This question has four parts. Firstly, is the car moving towards the girl or away from her? Next, what is the actual frequency of the car hooter if she hears 320 hertz? Thirdly, predict what will happen if we increase the speed of the car. And of course, explain your choice. 
Here is the solution. Firstly, we can interpret a drop in pitch as the car moving away from the goal. Next, we use the Doppler equation. Always copy it out exactly as it appears in the data sheet. Then make the decision as to whether the fraction is going to be greater or less than 1. We choose minus at the top and plus at the bottom to get a velocity fraction less than 1. We substitute all the values, including the zero, for the velocity of the listener because the girl is standing still. And solve using your calculator. Don't forget, of course, that you had to convert the velocity of the source from kilometers per hour to meters per second by dividing by 3.6. Thirdly, if the car goes faster, then the denominator of the velocity fraction is larger, the fraction is smaller, and the pitch is lower. So the correct answer is decreases. To explain this, if the car drives away at a faster speed, the wave fronts of the transmitted waves behind the car will be further apart, and the wavelength will be longer than when the car moves at a slower speed. So for the same speed of sound, a lower frequency is observed. Now it is your turn. If you have the 3-in-1 study guide, turn to page 3.3, question 3, and you can also do questions 4, 5, and 6 on page 3.8. You'll find their answers on pages 3.7, 3.10, and 3.11. We have two questions from the 2-in-1 study guide. In question 10, we have a moving source, it's the bird, flying towards a stationary listener, the bird watcher. And we're given the frequency of the source. Doppler problems at school level are limited to only one of the source or the listener moving. The calculation gets more complicated if they are both moving. This question is also in four parts. Start off with these two. What's the property of sound related to pitch? And name the wave phenomenon that causes the difference in pitch. Here is the sound wave pattern as detected by the listener. You've got to be able to use your grade 10 knowledge of waves here. Note the fluctuations in air pressure and the distance measurements on the x-axis. Then use that wave pattern to write down the wavelength of the wave. From that, calculate the frequency of the waves and work out how fast the bird is flying. In question 4, we have a stationary source of sound, the ambulance, and a moving listener, a car driving past. The difference between the perceived frequencies is 80 Hz. That's the size of the drop in pitch heard by the driver as they pass by the ambulance. We have to identify the phenomenon and then calculate the speed of the car. Pause or rewind the video at this stage to answer these questions and then continue to play from here to view the answers. In question 10.1, it is the frequency that related to the pitch. Naturally, all these questions are about the Doppler effect. However, be sure that in an exam with other questions around, you can still recognize a Doppler effect question. From the wave pattern, we can see that the wavelength is 0,2 meters. If you substitute that into the wave equation, then you will get a heard frequency of 1700 hertz. That's quite a high note. Two and a half octaves above middle C. Music students will know what I mean. Now to the speed of the bird. The listener hears a higher pitch as the bird is flying towards them. So the velocity fraction must be greater than one. 
Remember to substitute the zero as well. A couple of algebraic steps later, we get an answer of 10 meters per second. That is a reasonable speed for a bird, about 36 kilometers per hour. In question four, we have to name and state the effect to earn all three marks. So we provide the definition as well as naming the Doppler effect. The mark allocation is a useful guide to how much is being asked for in a question. Finally, the calculation. We substitute all the known values. We have the speed of sound, 340 meters per second. We have the frequency of the sound, source 700 hertz. And we have the speed of the source, which is zero. We can substitute those values into both forms of the equation moving towards and moving away. But that does leave us with a leftover problem. We have three unknowns in two equations. The frequency that the listener hears moving towards, different from the frequency that the listener hears moving away, and the velocity of the listener. So that is three variables and only two equations. Fortunately, we have one more equation. The difference between the two frequencies heard. So the toward frequency subtract the away frequency is 80. Solve carefully and you should get a speed for the car of 19.43 meters per second. That last digit is rounded off to two decimal places. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.